Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And it is Wednesday morning, and that means we bring back your favorite guest, Anna Kelly. How are you doing, Anna? I'm doing great today, Michael. I had got to have breakfast with my daughter this morning, so that Woo-hoo! was a great start to my day. There you go. Love that. Love that. Hey, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in D.C. this week, debt ceiling and big old spending bills and all of that. But something that slid under the radar that I just flat out missed uh, that you brought up this morning are a couple of things that really could be, um, I don't know, significant changes to retirement accounts, specifically IRAs, Roth IRAs. And if you're a real estate investor, you had better pay attention. So why don't you talk about what, uh, what you found? Absolutely. So, you know, the Ways and Means Committee is basically this committee um, in Congress that's trying to kind of negotiate how do we fund all of the, the spending that we're trying to pass. So you try to pass a $4 trillion, $4 billion tax bill. I think it's trillion. Trillion. So with a T. With a TTT. Uh, more money than I've ever seen, right? Yeah. You've yeah. got to figure out how do you fund it. And so the Ways and Means Committee has been talking about the different tax strategies that they're trying to use to fund it. And there's really three things that kind of jumped out at me. Two big ones we talked about this morning. I'll I'll mention a third one as well that I thought I never thought I'd see this coming. Right. And I haven't seen really anything posted about it. Very, very little. But one of them um, that's important to a lot of real estate investors, especially if you invest with your retirement funds. Right. Mm -hmm. And essentially, real estate investors right now can invest in an IRA or a 401k, -hmm. and they can invest in real estate by by converting it to a self-directed plan, a self-directed retirement plan, just like you can invest in stocks and bonds, you can invest in real estate. And people will buy single houses, single family houses in their IRA. For sure. They will invest in syndications, like what I do with large multifamily within their IRA. Mm -hmm. And there are some certain rules against self-dealing. But essentially, your IRA can have 100% ownership in a property, right? Mm -hmm. Or they can even partner in ownership in a property. And one of the things that's in on the table for changing is that they want those who own real estate within a retirement plan to not be able to have your retirement own more than 10% of any one piece of real estate. Wow. I know hundreds hundreds of people that that has been their plan for decades right yeah. and uh they do they own little you know houses here and there maybe they're part of a syndication you know for this or that amount and wow wow it that's wow oh it no it gets tough. worse oh, yes no. so not only are they trying to say that going forward your ownership is limited to 10 percent ownership in real estate but they're giving you a two year clawback reversal period that if you currently own anything in your retirement plans that have real estate of more than 10%, you are forced to liquidate within two years. Now, if you have a Roth plan and you're forced to liquidate, you're not going to pay gains on the gain of that. So at least it's not hurting you from a tax perspective today. But if you have a traditional plan, Guess what? You sell while the market's hot, you're selling for top dollar, and you have a long-term capital gain. And the long-term capital gain rate gain rates next year are going up, right? So if you don't act very quickly by the end of this year, yeah. which is, I'm not recommending that you necessarily do this, right? Yeah. Because this is just proposed legislation. Oh, yeah. This does not mean that it's happening, but we need to be aware of these things to say, hey, could this impact my strategy today? Mm-hmm. And if it could, do I want to make some changes now or in the in the very near future, right? Wow. Even early next year. So just be aware if you're investing in real estate and think of thinking about doing it with your retirement plans, you could be very limited. Um, so there is a a movement. I've I've gotten a couple of emails. I think it's like hands off my IRA or something like this. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah. People to call your senator and say do not vote for this. We, we want to be. Um, and why don't they limit you to, you know, in stocks and mutual funds to a certain percentage investment. So they're definitely clearly going after real estate investors. Hmm. And that's just the first part. Oh no, there's two more. Well, that's the first, the first thing that I saw that was changing. Do you yeah. want to talk a little bit about that before I talk? To yeah. You about the big one for me and again, it's a proposal, right? So very easily, the two-year thing could become five years, right? They, these are all 
give and takes, but it is very clear that they need to raise taxes. So yeah. they, they clearly are trying to institute things that force an activity. Yes. And hence the two-year cliff forces an activity. A lot of that will be taxed at an increase. It's, they're coming after real estate. They see real estate as a piggy bank and they are trying to crack that piggy bank. So why, I mean, that's just, wow. Just, just absolutely. Wow. And, you know, we were really excited that at least they're not taking the 1031 exchange off the table. Right. So, you know, potentially you could exchange if you're not in a retirement plan, but if you're a retirement plan and they don't allow you to exchange in a real estate with more than 10% ownership, you're really limited to not having to pay that gain. Yeah. So it, it will was, force sales. It will, it will, it just will. Absolutely. And they're counting on it, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the question is right now, they also, I think we talked about this last week, right now, it looks like they're suggesting a 25% top uh, tax bracket for long-term capital gains. Mm -hmm. Biden mm -hmm. was threatening 39 and a half percent. At least was. what came out of the Ways and Means was 25%. But they are talking about making that one provision retroactive to this tax year. So while the other things would be for 2022, they want to make sure whether you've sold anything yet this year or not, they're getting 25% instead of 20. If you're in that top tax bracket, which is $400,000 yeah. for an individual. And I believe it's 450. For it is. Yeah. Tax. The whole marriage penalty thing is back. Yeah. And again, $400,000 is a lot of income W2 income, but you got to remember folks, a lot of this stuff, if you're selling real estate, I mean, if you bought five or six years ago and have more than one or two assets, it's very easy to take that plus your W2 to get over the threshold. It's, it's not that far away. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about piece number two? Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So piece number two is one of the beauties of having a um, self-directed 401k versus mm -hmm. a self-directed IRA, for example. Mm -hmm. And even, it doesn't even have to be self-directed. It could still be traditional, right? Traditional okay. or raw. Um, is that for an IRA, you're limited to a very small amount that you can put in every year. It's yep. income-based. And for most people, it's like $5,500, $5,800 a year. Okay. For a 401k, it's essentially 10 times as much that you can dump into your plan as hmm. you can an IRA right now. So for um, self-employed individuals right. um, or self-employed who have businesses, so they're self-employed and they employ other people, mm. a lot of times what business owners will do is they'll put up to $58,000 a year aside wow. in a 401k. Because right now I think it's a $58,000 limit. You can put that aside and fund your 401k and your business that you own can match it, right? Oh, wow. And then you can do the same for your employees. So they can fund and 401k and then the business matches that. Well, the business owner has been incentivized to have these plans because they can write off the company match, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of wealthier individuals or, or self-employed individuals will fund, max fund their 401k. They'll do some type of match and get the tax deduction. And then the same year, they'll roll it over or the next year into a Roth plan. Okay. So they pay the tax on it in the current tax bracket, mm -hmm. but they do get some type of offsetting benefit by doing a company match for their employees. Right. And the reason they get that is because the government wants to incentivize oh, company Savings. owners yep. to provide retirement plans for their, their employees. Mm -hmm. Well, what's on the table right now, Michael, is to disallow converting to Roth. Oh. So these company owners create your plan. You can invest in it. We'll give you the deduction if you match other, you know, employees' um, contributions. Mm -hmm. But we will no longer allow anyone who makes over four hundred thousand dollars a year to convert their plan to a Roth, which means they lose out completely on the ability for tax-free growth mm -hmm. of their retirement assets, whether it's traditional assets like, you know, mutual funds or whether it's real estate. To me, this is huge. It's a yeah. huge disincentive for employers to do right by their employees and to contribute to retirement plans. Wow. Yeah, that's, um, it, it feels like they're kind of trying to change the rules mid game. Yes, absolutely. And, and there will be, uh, when you do that, unintended consequences often are um, pretty negative. They are. And that's the thing that's so hard, you know, to wrap my head around. And I'm not trying to be like Debbie Downer in this no. episode, right? But 
they've talked about trying to figure out backdoor ways to go after retirement plans for a while. Yeah, they need the money. (laughs) They need the money. You know, one of the things that they recently did as well was when you die, instead of your family inheriting that retirement plan and having years to pay the taxes on that, Mm -hmm. now they're forcing you to sell, I think, in a three-year period to liquidate those retirement plans, which if what the, the thought is, you know, a long time ago, like if I'm in my 60s and my parents died in their 80s, mm-hmm. I've got 10 years to slowly liquidate and pay the gain, long-term capital gains. Sure. Well, now they're increasing the long-term capital gain rate. And the thought is in your working years, when you're first inheriting, your tax bracket's higher. It's higher, yeah. That force you to liquidate more because yeah, whatever yeah. you liquidate becomes part of your income. income. Yeah. It raises your tax bracket for ordinary income and it raises your tax bracket for capital gains. So they've already done these types of things to try to go after retirement accounts. These are just the next two levels to go after your retirement accounts. And like you said, it's changing the, it's changing the rules. They're acting like it's perspective. But if you own real estate right now and you have to liquidate it in your plan and you have a plan to continue to use Roth, they're essentially saying, you know what, guys, we're not, we're not going to give you tax-free growth of anything anymore. Wow. I, yeah, this yeah. is, um, yeah, folks, if you, uh, these are changes we have to watch, especially real estate investors. I know thousands of people that that's, that's their plan. They're either lenders or owners and, and yeah. they're, you know, they're using the rules of the game, right? It's, it's a, yeah. it's a thing. So this is going to force activity. This will raise taxes. It is a proposal, right? We, we will say Correct. that. Yeah. But, watch um, it carefully. but you know, this is uh, as a real estate investor, when I see these things, yes, initially I get kind of fired up and I'm like, yeah. I believe this is ridiculous, right? Um, but then it then it makes me go. Um, it, it's all about control, right? Part mm-hmm. of why we love real estate investing is because we can fairly accurately um, predict kind of long term where things are going. Mm-hmm. Um, we can pretty much bank on a certain you know income coming in. If we have fixed rate loans, we can guarantee kind of where our payment will be, yeah. and we have that ability con- to control a lot of what's going on with our investment. When I'm investing in retirement plans and setting money aside every month in a 401k, I don't know what the government's going to do with that money in the future. I give up control, not only in what I'm investing in, if I'm investing in, you know, other deals that I can't have ownership in, because whether you're investing in real estate or or stocks passively, it's passive. But now I don't know what the government's going to do for the taxation. When I buy real estate, at least for now, right, Mm -hmm. I don't have to sell. Yeah. Granted, I might have to pass it to my kids. They might have to pay inheritance tax, but I don't have to sell. Right. So I generally speaking, quit funding my retirement accounts a long time ago. And instead I invest my retirement funds in cash flowing real estate. Me too. That I can have the benefit of it today and in the future, still have tax deductions and be able to take all those tax deductions today mm-hmm. and then have some options for how I get rid of it and how, how my taxes change. So Think about, you know, in the future, if the government's going after retirement accounts, are you best served continuing to fund these retirement accounts and hope that you can touch it and the rules will stay the same? Or would you be better better served by buying with cash one rental at a time? I think the answer is real estate. Oh, there's no question. Uh, And it's funny, I did the same thing, right? So in my career with my retirement accounts, I always did the company match. I saw it as free money. Yes, I did too. while I was employed, I always borrowed the money, which to me was an interest-free loan, right? So if I put in $100, they match it, then I borrow 100 It's like I'm getting my money tax-free. Yes. Then when I left, uh, I just paid the 10 penalty and you know, used the money to buy a bunch of real estate. So yeah, I don't, I don't uh, frankly, I've always said I don't trust the government and the government right now is getting bigger, which freaks me out. So yeah, yes. we see the world the same way. It's pretty funny. Yeah, absolutely. So invest in real estate. The other thing I'll just kind of throw out there, because I did mention three, um, and it's kind of now it's front page news, right, is that the um, Yellen, Janice Yellen, has essentially asked banks, and they've put it in the bill. I know, I saw this. To start reporting every single U.S. citizen or business who has transactions of more than $600 in their bank. They want to know the total every in, single time and the yes. total outs of every single bank account. So basically they're saying, all oh, you American citizens, so many of you are committing tax fraud and you're underreporting income. So we're now going to have banks be big brother and report how much money you move in and out. 
so that they can have an audit flag so that they can try to find people that are evading taxes. The question is, are people who trade $600 a year in their bank account yeah. trying to defraud the government and not pay taxes? Six, yeah, maybe six grand. I don't 600? think so. Maybe 60 grand, maybe, maybe 600 s- grand, yeah. but $600. So, you know, big. I mean, who, who doesn't who doesn't have one transaction a year that's not over 600, like a five-year-old? I mean, really? Even unemployment, you're given $600. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, I know, saw that and it was... Uh, I am so against Big Brother. Oh, that yeah. that that s- that funny. sounded funny. Uh, that, that, Big Brother that. is watching, and you know, I'm I'm all for pay your taxes. Oh, of course, Use every legal loophole available to you, and pay your taxes, pay right? Your taxes, yeah. Um, but government is getting um, bigger. There, more regulation is coming, and they're and going they, to tax more of your money. And they need to be um, fed. And they need to be fed. So yeah. be aware, you know, I, I think if anything, be aware of what's happening, you know, with tax code changes and with legislation and how that might impact you as an investor. Um, and that's what this show is all about, right? It's educating you so you can be exactly. a wise investor. And so it's not to say doom and gloom, not everything will pass, no. but, but be aware and make wise decisions that, that navigate these things and give you the best opportunity for success when these things change. Very cool. Well, do us a favor as we wrap this one up, Anna, how can people find you and get part of your world? Right. You can follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram at Anna, R-E-I, Mom Kelly. And my website is greaterpurposecapital.com, where we invest in apartment communities to create a meaningful impact and strong returns. Very cool, Anna. Thank you very much. I look forward to round two. Thank you. Mm-hmm.